The Whole Story of the Donut by Pat Miller. Few remember the master mar mariner, Hanson Crockett Gregory, though he was bold and brave and bright. But the pastry he invented more than 166 years ago is eaten daily by donut lovers everywhere. This is his story. In 1844, Hanson Gregory was just 13 when he went to sea. He left the family farm to become cabin boy on the schooner Isaac Acorn out of Rockport, Maine. Hansen quickly rose to Cook's assistant. Then he was put to work high in the rigging. He ran up the rat lines barefoot as high as eight stories to furl or release the sails. He could steer a ship over trackless waves by sun and stars. At 19, Hansen was captain of the cargo sch schooner Hardscrabble, tall with canvas stretched to the wind. In a few more years, Captain Gregory raced his cargo from Maine to California as commander of a clipper, the fastest ship on any ocean. On one voyage, he risked ship and crew to rescue seven Spanish sailors from certain death in a frigid sea. When the news reached Spain, Queen Isabella II awarded Captain Gregory a medal for heroism. But what about the pastry? For that, we have to go back to June 22nd, 1847. The crew of the Ivanhoe had worked up mighty appetites through the night. The sun was barely up as 16-year-old Hansen and the cook prepared breakfast. It would be the same coffee and fried cakes they served most mornings on the Ivanhoe. The cook tossed wood into the belly of the cast iron stove, heating the cauldron of lard. Hansen formed balls of sweetened dough. Both men stood on spread legs as the cramped galley lurched with the ship. Pans clanged overhead. The aroma of browning sugar rose as the cook dropped in the first blobs of dough. The iron railing on the stovetop kept the pots in place as the Ivanhoe bucked and plunged. When the cakes were fried, Hansen dumped them out on the dining table. They were sweet and crisp, at least around the edges. Their raw centers, heavy with grease, made them drop like cannonballs in the stomach. Sailors called them sinkers. As Hansen developed, shaped another batch, he was struck by an idea. He took the round lid off a pepper can and cut perfect holes in the center of each sinker. Then he tossed the rings into the bubbling lard. The cook had never seen such a downright fool thing. Neither had the sailors who showed up for breakfast but that didn't keep them from taking a bite. The cakes were brown and sweet and fully cooked. Sighs of delight rose above the noisy sea. A new breakfast tradition was born. The teenage Hansen shared his invention with his mother. She cooked up large batches to sell in a friend's store and on the docks to hungry sailors. Ship's cooks now served holy cakes. That's how Hansen's invention spread around the world and down the years and right into your stomach. But sailors like their stories bold. Not satisfied with the pastry's humble origin, they spun legends worthy of such a delicious treat. One told how Captain Gregory wrestled the wheel as the sea became a monster. The first mate brought sinkers to keep up the captain's strength. Just as the captain grabbed one, the waves crashed over his head. Captain Gregory speared that sinker on the wheel spoke. He invented the donut while he saved the ship. Another legend tells how wild waves grabbed five sailors and pulled them overboard right after breakfast. With bellies full of oily pastries, they sank like stones. Captain Gregory shouted, never again. He used a wooden belaying pin to punch holes in every cake so they resembled the ship's life's rings. No sailor has since been drowned by his breakfast. Interviewed in 1916 for the Patriot Ledger, Captain Gregory seemed amused at all the fuss over his invention 69 years before. He laughed as he teased the reporter that he had invented the first hole ever seen by mortal eyes. 
When the reporter asked if he was pleased with his invention, Captain Gregory repl replied, Well, sir, those doughnuts were the finest I ever tasted. No more indigestion, no more sinkers, just well done fried through doughnuts. At 89, Captain Gregory died at the Sailor's Snug Harbor, a home for sailors near Quincy, Massachusetts. He was buried overlooking the sea where stormy weather can be spotted as readily as it once was from the quarterdeck of the hardscrabble.